do an all levels practice for your feet and your legs. So begin in a comfortable seat. Lift your hips up onto something, get some height under there so that they are higher than your knees, or so that you're out of the slouch that can happen in your low back. And then just land your hands on your feet in any way. Maybe they cross over, which can, can actually be good for the nervous system to have what is sometimes called cross body, where the right goes over the left, left goes over the right, the way your leg kind of falls. But whatever way is easiest for you to reach your feet, to just touch them. And maybe go into eyes closed or looking down. And feel your foundation. The feet are in a way that you're not touching the floor with the soles, how they would when they're fully supporting you. They are still meeting the floor or or whatever else is on the earth. And pay attention and drip. All the way down and down out of your head. If you only make it as far as your shoulders, good. If you can make it as far as your feet, too. Keep going down, down, down to the earth, down to your soul. if anything changes for you, does your breath change? Does your awareness change or does what you're focusing on change? together to touch, in other words, found angle. Add something under your knees if need be, or add more height under your hips, or tip your hips forward until your knees angle a little more down, and then massage your feet. So especially if you've really been walking a lot, if they've been shoved into shoes, or if they just haven't had much attention lately. Came up to your feet. And there might just be a spot or spots where you just press your palms in and, and leave them heavy there. You find just the right amount of pressure. You might want to press and release. Make sure that you're not hunching to get down to them. Maybe you squeeze each toe. You can get the padding on your heels to move a little bit too. Not meant to be a full callus. <laughs> it's meant to move a little bit. See if you can get it to move some. How's your breathing? How are your shoulders? How's your jaw? Now, how are your feet? Let's cross them again, but put the other one in front from however the, the from the way that they were switched. And then just rest your hands. Hands and feet will have more awareness in them. All those nerve endings have been woken up by the pressure, by the touch. So keep slipping down into your extremities or out into your extremities. Can you push down the lift up, lift your rib cage away from your pelvis? Good. If you didn't already feel the need to rub your hands up or like you're washing them after touching your feet. 
and then move what you're sitting on out of the way and find a way to your hands and knees, however you get to a tabletop position. And if it's okay, curl your toes under so they're getting a little more stretch or really the soles of your feet are getting a little more stretch. Check on your hands that the wrists don't bear all of the weight. And then go around in circles. And your circles might stay small right in between the hands and knees, like if you're drawing the circles with your belly button on the floor. And maybe your circles stay back over your feet more, away from your hands. Maybe they're big circles that go all the way around your hands and feet. So every time you go back into the feet, they're getting a little more stretch with the curls on your toes. And then reverse your circles when you're ready. And if you changed the circumference, positioning, do what you did the first time as well, or times, first direction. Might be timing with your breath. And then find the middle and pull up into a cat. Maybe so much you lift off your hands, they get lighter. And then arch into cow when you're ready. Exhale to cat, pull in and out. And inhale to arch. And then reset the hands and do go fists if you need to, if it's starting to bother the wrists too much. And then stretch out one of your legs behind you with the toes still curled under. Press back through your heel and then pull forward. If you've got fingers grabbing the foot, pull forward. So you get as long as possible from that foot all the way to your chest or to your head. Maybe curl the toes more or pull them in more, push the heel back until you feel a good stretch in your calf muscle. And you can play with that there. Move from side to side, pause over at the baby toe side a little more, feel how it changes the stretch. Go to the middle, go to the big toe side. And then when you're ready, point to your toes instead. Clip all the toenails into the mat or the floor and pull away. So make sure that leg isn't so far back that it's dragging you back. You're right over top of the other leg. Keep adjusting your hands as you need to. And make sure you're breathing okay. Neck and shoulders are okay. And then bring that knee under and notice the difference if we point to both toes or both sets of toes. Come down into a child's pose, whatever variation you want. Change it up, widen the knees or use the arms as a pillow or bring in a prop, whatever you need to do. Is there a difference you feel in the foot, in the leg, that you've already played with? What do you notice? And then when you're ready, come up and we'll do the other side. So extend out the other foot with the toes curled. May as well curl the first set too. And check on the hands. Feel if it's okay to pull the toes in a little closer and push the heel back until you get just the right amount of stretch. And play with it again. Take it from one side to the other. Find the place where you touch into just the right amount for you. Just the right position in the muscle. Keep checking hands. Neck. And when you're ready, point to those toes. And as if they've clipped, clipped in, they're attached to where they are. Pull away so you feel the stretch across. The top of the foot, all the way up the shin. Check that shoulders aren't shrugging, neck is okay. If it's really lifted, the head is, and bring it down a bit. If it's drooping or dropping, pick it up. And then come back and take the knees wide, big toes together, touch, sit back onto your feet. Maybe outstretch the arms this time or whatever you need to do with them. Fidget a little bit, rearrange as necessary. Climb up when you're ready and set your hands so that you're prepared for down dog. So middle fingers can align with outer shoulders, maybe a slight outturning so you push more into your index finger pose. Curl your toes, sit way back until you lift your knees up and pedal it up, play with the feet a little more. Bend both knees when you're ready, sit way back. 
So hands are lighter. Make sure they're not sliding. Grab into the mat. Make sure your wrists aren't too heavy. And you stay way back and push your heels back and down. Just on the right amount of stretch for you. Calves, hamstrings. Make sure you don't feel it in behind the knees. Check the shoulders for shrug. And then however you get there, we're going to lay down the floor. So you could come forward to plank and lower down chaturanga or however you want to get to the floor. Use your arms as a pillow if you wish. Pop your heels. Maybe rock the hips a little bit. Readjust as necessary. And then let breath be felt through your entire torso. Keep the normal cheek switch, let go of the shoulders more, let the body be really heavy on the floor. When you're ready to come up, place your hands back by your ribs or waist, lift up, and go all the way back to down dog again. Check hands once more, grab into the floor if there's a little bit of slip, and then lift up your right leg behind you. Bend your left knee so your body goes back, your hands get lighter, especially your right hand. Look forward where you want to go, and then push, lift the hand as you step through. Good, and then lower the left knee down. Make sure that the knee is okay. If it needs added cushioning, please add it. And then your back foot, your right foot, point, pardon, your left foot, point your toes. Look back at it. Make sure it's pointing straight back. Push down with the top of the foot until you can lift the knee. Make sure shoulders aren't shrugged, you're up on fingers, or even up on blocks if you have some blocks or they feel necessary at the moment. Make sure that at the hip, you're also sort of lifting or pulling the hips towards each other. A little bit of lift of belly. So again, we're not drooping or slouching, falling, pick up. You may not be up this high off the floor. You may not even want to lift off the floor. Make sure you can breathe. Good, and then land the knee, curl the toes under, and pick up that knee a little bit, but keep some bend in it or some heaviness in the hips. And then climb up, bring your hands onto your hips. And make sure <laughs> you didn't put lotion on your feet first. <laughs> You're not sliding. So dip your back knee down a little bit. Let your tail dip down with that so that the low back can release some pressure. We do work a little harder when we make it that way. And then hands can stay down or they can slip behind so you open chest. They could hang if you want to. Whoops, again. And then, or they can reach if you would like. How are the front toes? Are they starting to grab at the mat? The back toes, is it all weighted on the big toe? Or can you make sure it's on the baby toe as well? Make sure we haven't turned the foot out or we're not all weighted on the inside. With a little more dip, maybe a little more stretch, just the ribs or the hands. And then land your hands when you're ready. Lift to step back to down dog. Give it a little bit of pedal. Maybe a wobble, a wag. Perhaps a... You're ready to lift your left leg up. Bend your right knee so that it doesn't even lift the heel. So you're pulling yourself back by bending your knee, your weight goes back into that leg more. So you can look forward. Left hand is a little lighter, so it might go a lift as I step through. However you get the foot there, be kind to you. And then land to the right knee. Point the toes back. Check on them. Are they pointed straight back? Or is the ankle a little sickled? Or are the toes turned inward or something? Make sure they're straight back and then push down with them to lift the knee up. Make sure you breathe there. Make sure the teeth have space up to bottom, we're not clenching. How are your shoulders, fingers, hips? Can we squeeze between the legs even though we're splitting them apart? Keep checking the neck. Maybe you're dipping down more, maybe you're pushing, maybe up a little higher. When you're ready, land that knee, curl the toes under, lift the knee just enough. 
enough so that the low back doesn't go into a full arch where the hips don't hike up. Keep the hips low and then climb up, put your hands on your hips. Set yourself, if there's a wobble, make sure feet go a little wider side to side. Keep dipping the back knee and the tail. Check shoulders and then whatever you did on the other side, do that on this side. You can always choose again. Front toes, when they start grabbing at the mat, go ahead and lift them and spread them. Back foot again, check that it's not turned out. Big toe doesn't have all the weight. Maybe you can dip your tail a little more. It will wake up the stretch. <laughs> oh goodness. Don't possess me all on your feet before you breakfast. <laughs> and then give it a bigger stretch if you want to reach up. And when you're ready, come down. Lift up and step back to down dog. Give it a little walk. If you wish, go through vinyasa. Skip it if you would rather not go for it right now. You're like, what's vinyasa? You just saw it? <laughs> or you just say, no thanks. And then let's lower down, point the toes again. Decide the variation of child's pose you feel like playing with. Add props as needed. Let out the breath as you wish. You're ready to climb up. Lift off your feet. Curl your toes under. Sit to your heels if it's okay. You might need to spread your toes or add the big block in between the feet. Or stand on your knees. Whatever works best. If you can, though, if you can sit right on them, then we might also lift the knees up, be in a little crouching position, work a little on balance. You can challenge your balance by looking around. You may want to squeeze between the legs. And however you want to come to standing, stand up and make your way to a mountain pose. Wherever you want to on your mat, set your feet right under your hips. Give your shoulders a little roll back. Let out a breath if you need. And settle down to your feet again. Feel where they touch floor. Can you put all your awareness down there? Let it out of up here. Let it drain down. Maybe you spread your toes, maybe you fidget with them a bit. And your tail hang down. And your lower jaw release. Anything clenching that doesn't need to right now. Big, big stretch when you're ready. Reach way up, maybe back. And then just let it go. And then take your feet a little wider, like wider than your hips. And if possible, we're going to squat down. If possible, to keep your feet forward, do or attempt to. If they need to turn out a little bit, make sure that knees and toes are always facing the same direction. Add props under you if you know that a squat won't be so great. Or if you're near a wall, you can do your squat at the wall, slide down the wall, and you only go as far as you want to go. Yeah, and you might clean the wall, come back up, but sliding up. So you go for what you need. Set yourself into squat, props or not. Arms can be down, especially if you feel the need for more grounding, or hands can be together. You might press the knees open and take the shoulders back. Make sure that you feel comfortable enough to breathe. And always rearrange, move around your feet, add Something under is necessary, like under your bum, or go try the wall, if you're near me. Keep checking shoulders for this kind of pain. It might be kind of like hunched over like we do at our desk with our chin lifted. Can you get your shoulders back and neck more neutral? And then 
however you get down, help yourself down to the floor. Bring the feet together and sit up on something again. Let's go back to bound angle once more. And check on something. If you press into your feet again, or massage them a little, have they changed? Have you changed in a way? And send your left leg out in front. Actually, I'll say put your right leg out and I'll be mirroring you as you face this way. It's been a while since I've been mirroring without humans to teach to. And put your right left leg on top. Oh, that's a leg out, not a leg. Your right fingers thread them through your left toes. So the foot on the same side, the, the foot has crossed over your body, and the arm and the hand on the same side thread the fingers through the toes and then just squeeze, grab, or spread. And breathe. Can you lift up taller? Make sure we're not in a slouch. This knee could have something underneath it. get all the way in. I can't see if you're doing it so you could be skipping it, but it's so good for your feet, the toes, like toe separators in a way. It's not my fault if your feet are dirty. How's the foot? How's the ankle? Now maybe you stay there and free the fingers from the toes, wipe them off if you need to. Maybe you support the leg by holding it and make sure that that pressure or connection also helps you to lift up. Or again, put something underneath the knee or use your hands to support you to be taller. Maybe add some bend into the right knee. And then watch out for slouching into the back or falling back. The leg comes closer, it's like you're still trying to lift your chest, either chest towards the leg or up higher than the leg. Make sure shoulders and jaw don't do the work. And the foot is flexed, so you're not letting this kind of thing happen. The, foot is, the ankle isn't all sickled or folded. The sole of the foot is facing away. Keep breathing. And then slide the right leg away, but let the left leg release. Notice the feeling of difference, of change up at the hips, down at the feet, maybe a little dribble. And then bring in your right foot, cross over. Find a good spot where the ankle bone doesn't dig in so much. You might put it farther over if it feels okay. Add something under as need be, and then thread your left fingers through your right toes. Get them all in there. A little unhappy at first. And then just squeeze or spread your fingers. So here I just hold on to the ball of my foot and make sure that the ankle isn't folding. How do you feel? What do you notice? I want you to think about it. What do you feel about it? Do you need to support that knee? Do you need to prop yourself? Bring them out and stay and just be tall there, mindful of what's going on underneath the left knee. Or bring that knee in and up a little higher, wherever it goes, even if it's just a little bit. And make sure that you're still lifting up out of your low back. If hands need to go behind to prop you, you need to change your seat or your prop. You have to hold the leg and use that to lift you. Do what keeps you at your full capacity to breathe, full space. length of your spine. Look at the ankle, look at the jaw. And now release the whole thing when you're ready. Slide the legs away, give them a little wobble or dribble, massage the upper thighs if need be. And then you move what you've been sitting on aside. And come down on your back when you're ready.
And when you get there, go for a big stretch. Point up through your toes, let the back arch. And maybe flex the feet a little more, push through your heels, flatten the back. Sort of. And then walk your feet in and bring them up, bring knees up into your belly, get a squeeze. Maybe roll up the ankles together or lean them around in some way. Or maybe just pause. back of your hips heavy. Take your knees wide. Lift your feet enough that you can either reach for your shins, use your elbows inside your knees to press open, or maybe you can catch the feet. Watch out for bum lifting or shoulder shrugging. See if you can keep shoulders down and bum down. Like you're trying to pull your feet away or you're trying to pull your heels away from your head. Keep checking shoulders, neck. a little bit, press the legs wider. And release that. Let the legs have a moment to settle. And then decide if we're going for Shavasana, do you want a bolster under knees, perhaps, if you have one, or blankets, pillows, whatever it is you have. And you fidget your shoulder blades under you so that your shoulders lay flatter without the arch happening to the back. Maybe we can also put the back ribs down. And then let go or keep rearranging. Maybe a sigh, maybe the breath just settles deeper into the belly. Stay there. Get more cozy there. how your eyes, they can sink back, they can relax back into the head. Your tongue can be more soft. Your whole face can soften or smooth. of you that tend to grip or hold or are trying to offer support in some way, let them release that. So look for the support under you that you can rest into, that you can lay into. Notice where your breath as well as where your attention goes. And feel free, of course, to stay as long as you want. Be very different when we are home that we feel like there's there's always something to do there's something we should get to a place is what you should get to this relaxation this time to yourself even if someone else comes in and disrupts perhaps they can just lay down with you You know, some things may be easier said than done. If it were as it being a video, you can turn it off and come back later. And let it run and end while you keep resting.
a spot that can be softer. And let your breath go there, even if it's your fingers, somewhere seemingly outside of the reach of your breath. It does reach everywhere through your circulation energy, your awareness. Let breath go everywhere. And you maybe start to wiggle your fingers and your toes and your wrists and your ankles. Gently rock or tip your head. Your body has some kind of stretch. Maybe a big reach, maybe fingers lace and push. Time to roll over to one side, curl into fetal position. Stay there a moment if you can. Set an intention to collect anything that you want to bring with you, or simply to round your back while it doesn't have to, have to bear weight. It doesn't have to be holding you up. It's not pushed into the floor of the chair. more moment if possible with no responsibilities you don't even have to hold up your head and then climb up into a seat and run off to whatever but if you can sit for a moment wrap yourself up with a big hug So the other arm goes on top of the shoulders down. Maybe pedal in a little bit whatever it is you do. And stay there or place your hands in a particular mudra as you wish. And thank you for sharing your practice.